The ideal gas law works very well for many situations. However, it's important to understand when it fails so that improved models can be used in those situations. To do that, we need to better quantify how often molecules collide. Let's start by first defining the collision cross-section, denoted as sigma. This is the area, in meters squared, around a molecule where if the center of a different molecule enters, they will collide. In the image, the blue circles are a region that signifies the space that a molecule occupies. The yellow concentric circle shows the collision cross-section. Since the center of the second blue circle has entered the collision cross-section of the first, then the two have collided. Still within the context of the kinetic model of gases, it is possible to use the collisional cross-section to define two more quantities, the mean free path and the collision frequency. The mean free path is the average distance a particle travels between collisions. It can be calculated by r times t all over root 2 times Avogadro's number times the collisional cross-section times the pressure of the gas. The collisional frequency is simply the average rate of collisions. It's determined by root 2 times Avogadro's number times the collisional cross-section times the average velocity times the pressure of the gas divided by the gas constant times the temperature. If these two quantities are multiplied together, then we get the average velocity. Now that we have these basic quantities relating to collisions, we can quantify when the ideal gas law no longer applies. Contrary to what the kinetic model of gases assumes, which is what the ideal gas law is based on, we know that molecules do interact with each other when they are not in contact with one another. One of the more significant contributions to these interactions are governed by van der Waal interactions, which is based on electronic forces that arise from instantaneous dipoles in the molecules. These become much less significant the further apart molecules are from each other. So, in general, we can treat gas as ideal when the mean free path is much larger than the diameter of the molecule. In other words, if the distance a molecule can travel before it hits another molecule is much, much larger than its diameter, then it means that the van der Waal forces are typically very small at any given time and can therefore be neglected. When the mean free path is similar to the diameter of the molecule, then these electrostatic forces are much larger and must be taken into account. Van der Waal forces can both be attractive and repulsive. The curve represents a typical van der Waal potential energy diagram based on the intermolecular separation of two molecules. When the curve is above zero, that means that the molecules repel each other. And when the curve is below zero, then the molecules attract each other. What we see is that when molecules are very close, they repel, and at a certain distance they begin to attract one another. There is a minimum which defines the optimum distance that molecules would like to be away from each other. As the distance increases between the molecules, the intermolecular forces get smaller and smaller until it is negligible, which is what we intuitively would expect. These intermolecular forces become important when the conditions are such that the gas should condense to a liquid or a solid. This means that, depending on the gas, below a certain characteristic temperature, the ideal gas law no longer holds. The figure in this example is a phase diagram for carbon dioxide. There is a gas region, a phase transition region where both liquid and gas are present, and a liquid region. Each line represents the pressure versus volume relationship at a given temperature. These lines are called isotherms, meaning that the temperature is held constant. As the temperature cools to 31.1 degrees Celsius, the ideal gas law accurately describes the system less and less. You will notice that for the isotherms at temperatures less than 31.1 degrees Celsius, the pressure of the gas increases as the volume decreases until they hit the region outlined by the vapor and liquid phase. In this region, the plot both liquid and gas are present, and as the volume decreases, the gas condenses completely to a liquid. This is denoted as a horizontal line, since as the gas condenses to a liquid, it requires a lot less space, meaning that the volume can drop without the pressure changing. Then, in the liquid region of the plot, the pressure can increase significantly on the liquid without a large decrease in volume. One interesting property of the liquid gas phase transition is that if one follows a specific temperature pressure program, the substance does not need to go directly through a phase boundary. As shown in this phase diagram for carbon dioxide, plotted for the pressure of CO2 as a function of temperature, 
the parabolic shaped line that denotes the boundary between the liquid and the vapor phase ends at something called the critical point. Pretend that we have a sample of CO2 initially in the liquid phase. If the temperature and pressure are increased such that it stayed a liquid past the critical point, the CO2 becomes a supercritical liquid. It is neither a gas or a liquid, but a combination of both. We could then lower the pressure so that the CO2 would become a gas. By going around the critical point, a supercritical fluid can be used to dry fragile structures since no hard phase change occurs. It can also act as a non-toxic high-pressure solvent which can permeate every pore to extract organic compounds. CO2 is the most common supercritical liquid since the critical point occurs at 31.1 degrees Celsius. Dutch physicist Johan van der Waals proposed changes to the ideal gas law to account for real gas interactions. He accounted for the repulsive interactions on the pressure by specifying that some of the volume of the container is occupied by the molecules themselves. This decrease in volume scales linearly with the number of moles of gas. He also accounted for the attractive interactions with a term that he subtracted from the repulsive pressure term since the attractive interactions would tend to draw molecules closer together and reduce the pressure of the system. This attractive term is proportional to the concentration of the gas. The van der Waals equation of state is defined by the pressure being equal to nRT divided by V minus NB minus A times N over V squared, where N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature, V is the volume, B and A are both constants that are dependent upon the gas. If we plot the van der Waal equation of state, we get an image that looks similar to the one we saw for the CO2 isotherms. There are isotherms that are colored in blue. These ones have a temperature higher than the critical temperature of the gas. Recall that the critical temperature is the temperature at which the critical point occurs. As the temperature increases away from the critical temperature, these isotherms will look increasingly ideal. For isotherms with temperatures less than the critical temperature, those drawn in red, there is a decrease in pressure as the volume drops. This is not physical. Instead, we apply the Maxwell equal area rule to denote the phase change. To apply this rule, we draw a straight line across the isotherm, such that the area above is the same as below the line. This is how we regain the experimentally observed pressure versus volume plot seen previously. Regardless of the obvious and physical prediction by the van der Waal equation of state, it more accurately predicts physical systems than the ideal gas law. The green isotherm is when the temperature is set to the critical temperature. At the critical pressure, denoted at 1, since the pressure and volume are scaled to the critical values, the isotherm goes flat, denoting that the gas went through the critical point. The flat inflection point at the critical point means that the derivative and the second derivative of the van der Waal equation of state can be set to 0. This allows us to determine the constants A and B for each gas based on its unique critical point. In order to simplify this process, the van der Waal equation of state can be rewritten in terms of molar volume. We can then solve the critical volume, temperature, and pressure in terms of the parameters A and B. Of course, this process can also be reversed if the critical values are known in order to find A and B. For both the ideal gas law and the van der Waal equation of state, we have been quantifying how the pressure and volume change at a given temperature. Compressibility is an empirical measurement of how the pressure of a gas changes as the volume changes. For example, the plot illustrates the compressibility of nitrogen gas at different temperatures. Note that the compressibility of an ideal gas is 1 for all pressures. If a gas's compressibility is larger than 1, it means that the pressure is higher than ideal behavior for a given set of conditions, while values less than 1 means that the pressure would be lower than what is predicted by ideal behavior. Remember that ideal behavior means that there are no intermolecular interactions. So, being larger than 1 signifies repulsive forces dominate, and being less than 1 means that attractive forces dominate. Therefore, it should be no surprise that as the pressure increases, gases tend to have compressibilities higher than one, which reflects that the molecules are being forced very close together and repel each other. Also note that all the lines converge to one, or ideal conditions, at low pressures, reflecting when all the gases exhibit ideal behavior. The ideal gas law can be rewritten to include compressibility. In this case, Z is equal to P times the molar volume divided by R times T. 
When Z is equal to 1, the gas is characterized as ideal. When the gas is not ideal, the compressibility is fit according to a series expansion using either the molar volume or the pressure. Using the molar volume, the series goes 1 plus B over the molar volume plus C over the molar volume squared plus D over the molar volume cubed, etc. While for the pressure, the series goes 1 plus B prime times the pressure plus C time times the pressure squared plus D prime times the pressure cubed, and so on. This fits a compressibility curve like the ones described in the previous slide. The constants are temperature dependent and are used to accurately fit for a real gas. However, these terms have no physical meaning since they are only meant to precisely fit compressibility curves. They offer no direct description of the underlying forces between molecules.